All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, can you all type your names so I can do the register? And uh, then I've put up the problem that I got stuck on yesterday, and you guys are going to try and see where I went wrong, because um, I had another look at this after the lecture, and I made a really stupid mistake. So somewhere on the screen is my mistake. Um, you guys are going to try and find it while I do the register. Let's have a look through. It's a pretty basic problem. Um, what did I do wrong? Cool. All right. So we got George, uh, Joan, Alex. Roddy, Fifi, Becca, Sophie, and Leo. Cool. So still missing Caleb, Charlie, and Callum. There's Caleb. Cool. So Charlie and Callum. All right. Um. So I'll give you guys two minutes. See if you can work out what my mistake was in this working. So two minutes on time is starting. Okay, yeah, um, good job, Roddy, you've spotted it. So I did a really bad job of um, completing the square. So um, this line here, that shouldn't be a one, that should be a half, which will in turn give us a quarter outside. So this works quite nicely. Um, Becca did send me her um, solution yesterday, which was actually a lot, a lot neater. It's a lot quicker to get to the results. So I'm going to finish going through this, then I'll show you all guys what Becca did. Um, and in fact, in the exam you wouldn't use this method at all. There is another method which we'll be doing later on in the year, um, where we actually use an argand diagram to solve this, but um, we'll save that for later. So, to kind of complete this one, it should be y plus a half squared minus a quarter plus one. I'm just going to take it up to the other side. Cool. 
So that's what I get for why that's okay, Charlie. So Charlie and Callum both here now. Good. So yeah, that's what I get for my um, y value. However, this is where it gets a bit more difficult with my, my solution. y is z squared. Okay, so if I rewrite this as z squared, it's minus a half plus or minus 3 over 2 i. I can't just square root i. You can't really do square root i and call it a solution. Um, it doesn't make sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare coefficients because we know that z is going to be a complex number. <coughs> so I'm going to say that z is a plus b i. And I'm going to square that compare them both and then try and find a and b by looking at the real components and the imaginary components of my expansion. So a plus b i all squared is equal to minus one half plus or minus root three over two i. So if I expand the left hand side, we're going to then compare bits and pieces on the left and the right to try and find A and B and thus find my other roots. So it's a bit of a pain in the neck, this method, um, but it is it's kind of a useful skill. So I want you guys to try and do this now um, because it's a, it's a good skill to kind of have to compare and coefficients to find, um, to find the loans. So if you square out the left hand side, then you're going to get all the real bits together, all the imaginary bits together two simultaneous equations, solve those to find A and B, and that will give you the solution. So if you guys could do that, and I'd like you to send photos of your working to the Google Classroom, so not Google Classroom, to the Teams, I'm going to start a quick uh, Teams call with you all as well. Um, give that a go, um, and yeah, we'll see if you guys can get to the solution from this. It's still quite tricky, but that's the, that's the kind of theory behind it, the last bit is just the, um, the proof. So, um, Dying the Teams chat now. Cool, I'll invite you guys to that and then we'll start time now. So yeah. Cool. Right, um, so timer is starting now.
All right. Um, you can't see any answers yet, but we'll, uh, we'll start going through it. So, we're going to compare our coefficients and we'll expand this. And yeah, this is an awkward method, but as I said, sometimes it's, it's worth having a few different ways of doing things. Plus, it's nice verifying things work by using different methods. So, if I expand this, we get a squared plus 2ab i. And then it's going to be b squared i squared. i squared is minus 1, so 2 minus b squared. Here's half. Plus or minus root from 2i. Alright, so we're going to set a squared minus b squared is going to be equal to a half. So that's all the real bits. And all the imaginary bits is going to be 2abi equals plus or minus root 3 over 2. Well, I can get rid of the i's there because we're not going to need those in any solution. So that's the i m parts. So those are the bits we need to try and solve. Um, oh, here's negative half. Yep, good. Thanks, Rudy. Uh, we need to try and solve both of those simultaneously. So if I find. Um, doesn't really matter A or B first. Uh, let's get let's get B in terms of A. So if I make a bit more space up here as well. So you can rearrange this to have um, B equals plus or minus root 3 over 4a over 4a now because I'm going to square this the plus minus doesn't actually matter because if you square a negative it becomes positive so I'm just going to get rid of that um, uh, if I square this then we're going to get 3 over 16 a squared and then we can put that into the other equation. So we're going to get a squared minus 3 sixteenths a squared equals um, minus 1 half. If I times everything here by 16a squared, we're going to get 16 a to the 4 take 3 a is equal to your second new minus 8 a squared. Um, we can do another substitution. Um, so I'm going to get rid of all this now. Don't need it. And uh, if I say you know, y equals a squared, you're going to get 16 y squared plus. 8y minus 3 equals 0. Solve that with the quadratic uh, equation. Then we've got y. You know, y is equal to a squared. So I'm just going to bung this in the calculator. So we get um, a no, we don't. We get y equals a quarter or minus three over four. Therefore, a is going to be a half or um, root three over two. I should really be plus minus there. And we know b is root 3 over 4a. So um, let's just get rid of these. Uh, 
and B did have a plus minus over there. So if I put um, A there into B, ooh, A into B, we get B is plus or minus root 3 over 4 times 1 over 2, so it's going to be a 2 on the top there, so B plus minus root 3 over 2. So that gives me the answers of Z equals half plus or minus root 3 over 2 I. And the other solutions, if I put plus or minus root 3 over 2 I in Should there be an I there? Oh no, I made another mistake. Um, B equals uh, plus or minus um, Something's gone wrong. Um, why have I got an I there? Was I meant to have an I there? Minus three over three. Give me a sec, guys. I'm just going to find the solution I did earlier. Let me say, I don't think this works if you find um, if you find a first. Damn it! Ah, um, where do I get to? Let's go back. Let's go back a step. Uh, yes, they solved it for B. If you solve it for A, apparently it doesn't work because you have too many root negatives. This is a good question. This because there's a lot to it. But uh, iPad's not for us. Oh, there we go. Cool. Right, so I'm just going to go back a step. So a squared minus b squared is minus a half. And then 2ab plus minus root 3 over 2. So if I solve this with b instead, so I'm going to get um, a equals plus minus root 3 over 4b. Sub that in. So we're going to get um, 3 over 16 b squared minus b squared is minus a half times all that out 3 minus 16 b to the 4 is minus 8 b squared y equals b squared 3 minus 16 y squared plus 8y 0 solve that one I think it's going to be the same as the other thing, but negative. Um, so we get b squared is 3 over 4, minus quarter. 
So B is going to be That's what I did wrong. That should just be a plus minus there. Damn it. Okay, yeah, so that's it. So we get those four solutions there, basically. Um, and then we get one and minus one. So Z is. Oh my. Everything's crashing. Uh, so yeah, Z is going to be a half plus root 3 over 2i, a half minus root 3 over 2i, minus a half plus root 3 over 2i, minus half minus root 3 over 2i. Yeah, and it's all deleted, it's really good when that happens. So if I, um, really quickly then, I'll show you the better method, which is when you've got your factors z minus 1, um, hang on, so we solved it, it got z equals 1, well, z cubed equals 1, z cubed is minus 1, and we found that z equaled 1, z equal minus 1. Um, the way that Sophie said means that's a lot quicker is instead of long dividing into the power 6, you long divide into the power 3, and it becomes a lot quicker. So we're using z minus 1 as a factor of z cubed minus 1, and here we're using z plus 1 as a factor of z cubed plus 1. So we get z squared z cubed minus z squared. So we get z squared minus 1. So that gives me plus z on the top. z squared minus z. Take those away. We get z minus 1. So we get plus 1 on top of that. Same thing over here. Um, so we're getting z squared z cubed plus z squared minus z squared plus 1 minus z minus z squared minus z take those away z plus 1 gives me a plus 1 so we end up with two quadratics here to solve which is a lot easier so um, yeah much nicer method really but the other one's good too it, you know sometimes you won't choose the easiest uh, option so if we just solve those two, um, use a quadratic formula. Z is minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4. 1, 1. Over 2. And similarly, Z is 1 plus or minus the square root of Minus one. Sorry, that's gonna be one even. So I've solved both of those. Z is gonna be minus a half plus or minus what's that gonna give us? Um root minus three over two, which is gonna be root three over two. I and over here z is a half plus minus root three over two i. So yeah, a lot faster, but you get the same sets of solutions. All right. <laughs> uh, the rest of the question then is relatively straightforward. To so show each of these on an argon diagram. So we get a uh, kind of simple answer to the real parts and the imaginary. We get 1, we get minus 1. We also get a half, so if I put half there, plus root 3 over 2i. It's going to go there. Or we get a half minus root 3 over 2i, which is going to be there. And then we also get minus a half plus or minus root three over two i. So we get there, and we get there as well.
Now I've drawn it a little bit badly, um, but that's what it looks like. Show that each solution lies on a unit circle. If they're on a unit circle, it means that um, if you like, first of all, the angle between each of those should be um, pi by 3. Uh, also, we should be able to work out the, the distance from the origin. So if you work that out, I mean, we can say this, uh, we want to try and find, is this length 1? You can see it's nicely divided it into six parts. And this kind of links in later on with the super easy method of solving this question, um, which is part of Dimoivre's theorem. But we won't be looking at that this time. But, you know, you can kind of spot, well, yeah, divides into six, six roots, divides into six. Each angle is the same. If you work out the angle, you can work out the parts. Um, but yeah, so if, if I take, I don't know, one of these here, uh, we've got a length of a half here. Up it goes, uh, root 3 over 2. If you find that length there, so we could do what half squared plus root 3 over 2 squared, we get 1, square root 1, and we prove that that side length is indeed 1. And if you want, you could find all the angles, and all the angles would turn out as being um, pi over 3 which again proves angle. So that proves that they all lie on a circle, of, um, a unit circle there. All right, let's move on to something new, because that, that took a lot longer than I initially planned. OK, um, so today we're talking about modulus and argument. And I think a lot of today's notes, because I didn't kind of delete it to rewrite it. So. Um, the modulus, as you know, is kind of the size of a vector, or the magnitude of a vector. And um, in this case, the modulus is the length of our vector of our complex number on an organ diagram. So kind of like we just, this is why I chose this question yesterday. It's because it nicely leads into modulus and argument, which is the angle. So if you guys could copy this down, Z is the magnitude of the vector. The vector form of, uh, maybe I should rewrite this, it is a bit awful, isn't it? Okay, so the modulus of a complex number is the length of its vector on argand diagram. So in other words, if you've got your complex number is z equals x plus y i, your modulus is going to be x squared plus y squared square root just from Pythagoras. So that's the modulus. The argument of a complex number is the angle um, the vector there should be an A in argument there should be uh, the angle the vector um, makes with the X axis so the argument is theta here and x axis important there so that's our argument 
And because it's always the angle of the x-axis, it's always going to be the same way of finding it. So you can imagine... Um, if you've got your complex number there, it's going to be x across, it's going to be y up. The angle there is always going to be tan theta is y over x. So you can always use tan theta as y over x to find your argument. Right, is everyone okay with that? Um, I don't want to move on until you've all got that copied down. So to find the argument, use tan y over x. To use the um, modulus, we use x squared plus y squared. All right, uh, moving on. <coughs> so, <coughs> can you guys try and find the modulus and the argument of z? I've got an example here. I'll write it a bit neater. And I'll put the other bits on the board there. Can you guys try and find the modulus and the argument? It's always anti-clockwise. Um, no. So if you, I mean, in this one, you'll see the argument is just the angle made, uh, measured with the x axis. Um, we'll go into sines in a minute, but for now, solve this one and I'll talk about sines in a second. Because, um, yeah, it's not always going to be there. It could be the angle down here, it could be the angle up here, it could be the angle down here. So um, try this one, I'll go through, I'll go through sines and such in a minute. Um, yeah, but it's not always anticlockwise. But if it's not anticlockwise, we need to introduce a sign to show which way we're rotating around the Argand diagram because we're always thinking about rotations from uh, from this line, rotating up, rotating down, rotating all the way around, rotating all the way around. So I'll give you guys uh, three minutes to do this one. It should be pretty straightforward.
Cool. All right, how do we get on? Um, yeah, negative argument's fine. Um, don't see any workings though, guys. Could you post your workings in the um, in the Teams chat? So uh, to find the modulus, we're going to square them, square root them. So modulus, dim red. Two squared plus five squared square rooted, which is going to be root <coughs> twenty nine. And find the modulus we know that theta tan theta y over x that's minus five over two. <coughs> and we want to do arc tan of that. Uh, one note these should always be measured in radians. Um, Arctan minus five over two. Cool. So, what that means is um, instead of the argument being measured. From x upwards, it means it's going to be 1.19 down, and that makes sense because if you if you sketch where this one is, so if we do a quick sketch of this, is it two minus five nine? So two in the real minus five i there. It's down here, so we expect the angle to be negative minus 1.19. Although we would kind of just write it where it is and call that negative angle. Right, does that make sense to everybody? So normally, um, I stuck the minus in because that's what Fifi got, but I would normally just do it like that with positives and then decide whether the angle is positive, negative, or whatever based on where it is on the Argan diagram. Cool. All right, let's move on. Oh, this is a nice messy slide. Um, oh my god. Okay, so what I'm <laughs> what I'm getting at here then is um Let's let's redraw this as well. So we always for a modulus for sorry for an argument we always start at the the x-axis the real positive x-axis. Now angles in an argument diagram obviously the whole thing is a circle. The whole thing is a circle, so the whole thing has two pi radians in it. If we're rotating up to the imaginary line, that's going to be pi by two. If we rotate again, that's going to be pi. If we rotate down this way, that's minus pi by two, and minus pi. So we always measure from here. So this would have an angle of zero. Up to there would be pi by two. That would bring us to pi. That'd be a rotation of minus pi by two. That'd be a rotation of minus pi. So that explains why your sign was so negative. All right, could you guys uh, do another one? Could you do this one here? So again, I give you three minutes to do that to find the modulus and the argument for this one, and sketch it on a argon diagram. So three minutes starting.
Cool. All right, uh, what don't you guys get about the diagram? So the diagram, basically your modulus is always going to be between pi and minus pi because we're talking this, the whole kind of rotation, the whole rotation is a circle. So there'll be two pi angles or two pi radians in the circle. So for the semicircle, we've got pi radians in total. If you're rotating up here, it's going to be between naught and pi by two. If you're rotating past here, it's going to be pi by two and pi. This way, it'll be between naught and minus pi by two, and this way, between minus pi by two and minus pi. It's because we're always measuring from that real axis. Um, we'll see what's happening in the other. Um, Jeremy. Are you playing maths on Minecraft? Oh my god, that's that's original. I'll give it that. Uh three point three okay, you okay, Roddy, is that I uh, know George, you've measured from Yeah, so we're just not playing this work. Nice. All right, we'll go through this one. And I'll try and explain it a bit better then. So, let's draw it first. Where is it on the argon diagram? So it's minus four, minus i. This is going to be here. All right. So if you work out the, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you did. Uh, if we work out the modulus first, so we're going to get 4 squared plus 1 squared. 4 square rooted, so it's going to be modulus of root 17. And the argument will be um, 1 over 4, so tan to the minus 1 of 1 over 4. Which gives me 0.2449. Now, it's not going to be 0 0.2449 because uh, that would be the angle measured from here, basically. So basically from that angle. Um, the angle that I'm going to need then is going to be going from here all the way around to here. So in other words, I can do pi minus that angle. So I'm going to do pi take away 0 0.2449. And we get uh, my angle is 2.897. But because I'm rotating uh, kind of clockwise underneath the axes, my modulus needs to be minus 0.2897. So there's a few bits that I just digest there. You can always use y over, y over x. Problem is, if it's pointing down here, it needs to be this angle measured all the way around here. And to do that, we need to do pi minus the angle that we found, which is kind of the same as this angle here. So we found like as if it was going this way. Um, and then we need to make it minus overall because we're rotating around the, um, around the bottom there. All right, I'll try and give you guys another bit. So if, is on the next slide? Um, this diagram can be kind of useful as well. Right, so if your Z is that way, then your angle is just going to be alpha, whatever you find it as. If your angle was down here, or your vector was down there, the angle is going to be minus alpha. If it's up here, it's going to be pi minus alpha. If it's down here, it's going to be minus Minus alpha, which is the case that we just did. 
Does that make sense to everybody? So we're always measuring from the real axis, either positive for over the top, negative for under the bottom. Says so unless he makes a land server. <laughs> Oh dear. I used to play Minecraft way before it was cool. I played it back in right when it began, back before they had all the electronics and all the, the red magical stuff. I can't remember what it's called now. Um, anyway, yeah, so I want you guys to try some of these. Sketch them first, basically, and the sketching it will give you an idea of whether your angle should be positive, more than pi positive. Sorry, positive and less than pi or, or negative and less than pi. Cool. All right. Um, there's quite a few here to do. I won't make you do all of these because that'd be tedious. So I'm going to cross out the middle, and I'm going to say sketch as well, because sketching lets you kind of see what's going on a bit clearer. So five there for you guys to do. I'll give you ten minutes to do those. Um, please post all your answers in the um, Teams chat. Anyone not posting answers, I'm going to delete your attendance because I won't know if you're here or not. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, I used to be able to just shoot it. My graph doesn't go to 11i. What? What do you mean it doesn't? Oh, on Minecraft. Um. Make more blocks, make the blocks bigger. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, give that a go, guys. Ten minutes starting from now, and make sure, yeah, make sure you post your workings in the teams. Otherwise, I won't know if you're here or not. Especially if you've been quiet in the chat. Cool.
Right, I'm just looking through the answers. Um, <coughs> just looking at Sophie's. Yeah, so Fifi, there's a couple couple little mistakes with signs, and it's probably because I didn't explain things very well. So um, work through these. Ask me at the end if there's still any bits that don't um, don't make sense, but I'll try and explain why why some of those have come out wrong. So the first one, 12 plus 5i, this one should be pretty straightforward. Sketch it, 12, 5i, so it's going to just be whatever angle this is. So um, get your calculator ready. And um, So 5 over 12 in the first case. So my argument is going to be 0 0.3. <coughs> Modulus will be 12 squared plus 5 squared square rooted, which I think is going to be 13, right? Uh, yeah. So the way we'd write it is we say arg z is 0 0.395 and modulus of z is 13. So that one's pretty straightforward. Um, second one, and this this one I think uh, Fifi made a little mistake on. So this one, minus 3 and 6i. So that places it here. So the angle is going to be the angle we're measuring the whole way. And this is where I should have been clearer. So I'm going to do tan theta or tan alpha or whatever, tan theta y over x. I'm going to say it's 6 over 3. Because you used minus 3, Fifi, you already, when you did that, you found the angle. That was the final answer. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to need to take it away from pi. Um, but because you already used minus 3, it's actually worked out the right answer. So that's why we sketch it, just to check that our, our angle is in like the right place that would make sense. So if I do octan of 6 over 3, so octan of 2, I'm going to get 1.1. 1 .1. Um, I'm going to take that away from pi, so I'm going to do pi take answer, which gives me my argument It's going to be 2.03 radians. When you did it, you got you got 2.03, and then you, let me just check what you did again. No, you got a negative. Um, yeah, basically, don't ignore the signs when you do this. Completely ignore the signs. Um, calculate the the angles without the signs, and then use a sketch to work out whether it should be positive, negative, or whatever. Just checking this one. Uh, George, why are you adding pi by 2 on? Remember, the angle you found is the angle between um, the x-axis and your, um, your vector. <coughs> so yeah, this one should be 2.03. And if you kind of check that, is 2.03 between pi by 2 and pi? Remember, pi is 3.1. Pi by 2 is about 1.5. So yeah, two does make sense for that, for that is. So that's what you should get for this one, and then we should be getting uh, what three squared plus six squared, three forty-five. So yeah. Which you could turn into three root five. So that's your plus C. Okay, right. Uh, let's try and make this more simple. When you're doing these, ignore the signs when you're finding the angle. Otherwise, it comes out wrong, basically. Because if we're using we're using trig, we're using sides of a triangle. You always want it to be positive. Um, 
you imagine we've got height of 6, we've got a length of 3, trying to find that angle there, and then we're doing pi take the angle to get the angle that we want. Because you use the minus, it's kind of confused it. So don't use, whenever you're doing the angle bits, ignore all the signs and just use positives for each part. And then use your sketch to work out which quadrant it's going to be in. Right, uh, let's try the next one. So 2 minus 2. to the minus 2i is going to be here. So I'm going to use tan to the minus 1 of 2 over 2, which is 1, which is going to be, I think, pi by 4 for this one. Shift tan of 1. Yeah, pi by 4. So my answer is going to be minus pi by 4, because I'm in this first quadrant. So argz minus pi over 4. And um, my modulus is going to be 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is going to be 4 plus 4, so it's going to be root 8. So my modulus is going to be 2 root 2. I'm just going to quick check for you, see what you guys got for these ones. So that was D. So yeah, Fifi, if you look at your answer, it can't be a quarter pi because it needs to be negative. So just when you do it, just ignore all the signs. Always use the length as positive for the angle. Um, Joe, and how do you get on? Oh, yours are all separate pictures because you're building blocks in Minecraft. Um, was your argument right to root 8? Yeah, root 8, okay, cool. Uh, your angle is wrong though, you need to have a negative angle. Again, you're doing the same thing as there. So use positive um, values. Sophie, yours is that right? 0.79? I'm guessing that's the same as quarter pi. Um, yeah, please the mic good. Rounded a bit there, but it's fine. And you got two root two, yeah, good. Uh, what else we got here? Roddy. Yeah, good. And uh, George. George, have you got a negative there? It's not very clear. Um, double check your signs on that one. Whoever Max Hancock is, they've gone. Um, yeah, that's right for whoever that was. Joan, that's that's incredible. Incredibly disgusting. I love the, the extension to the axis. Um, yeah, that's that's great. Okay, um, all right, so yeah, let's keep going with these. Not too many more. How long have we got? 15 minutes. No, that's not too bad. So, uh, what are we up to? You'll be uh, F next. So, for F, we're going to get minus 4 and then 11i, which is there. So, again, tan to the minus 1 of 11 over 4. Excuse me, 1.22. Uh, so I need to do pi minus 1.22. Oops. I take 1.22 to get my answer, which is arg z 1.92 for that one. And my um, modulus, give me 4 squared plus 11 squared, root 137. Right, last one. Uh, 
Um, so, two root three minus i root three needs to be down here. So, ten to the minus one of minus root three, sorry, no, of root three over two root three. So, that's actually ten to the minus one of a half. Gives me 0 0.46, so my argument is going to be minus 0 0.46. And my modulus, 2 root 3 squared plus root 3 squared. So you're going to get root 15. Cool. Um, all right, there's maybe got time for one more. Yeah, there's a couple more of these, but we'll stop these tomorrow. So if you guys could... 17 of... Uh, 13 minutes left. Um, see how you got on with these. You might get these done. We might have to go through these as a starter, but see how you do. So I'll give you guys 10 minutes to do these, and we'll start going through them today. And please comment your answers as you do them. So uh, especially anybody that got them wrong last time, send me a picture of your answers. Oh, um, I might change A and B because they're a bit easy. Um, there you go. Can you guys do those? Um, send me a photo of them as you do them. So four photos in total so I can check that you guys are getting it right. So 10 minutes starting now.
Cool, right guys, um, that was looking really good. Um, all the answers I looked at were correct. <clears throat> really quick, I'm going to whiz through this. So I've sketched them all already. Um, real fast, let's find all the arguments, sorry, the find all the moduluses. So, 2 root 2, 2 root 2, 13, root 72, which is 6 root 2. Uh, oh, that's annoying. Um, a or a squared plus a squared is going to be 2a squared. So a root 2. Is that right? a squared plus a squared, 2a squared root that. Root 2, a, yeah. And then let's find the arguments. So uh, real fast, let's do tan to the minus 1. 2 over 2. So we get minus pi by 4. Um, 3 over 2. Four. So that's going to be so I need to do minus lots of pi take 0.983. So minus 2.16. Uh, this one's going to be tens of minus 1 of 1. So that's going to be 3 quarters pi. And the last one is going to be minus 3 quarters pi. Cool. All right, let me just have a quick look through the rest of those. Yeah, looking good. Uh, ooh. Roddy, you're um, part B. Don't think that's right. Have a look at your part B there, Roddy. Callum, go Callum, you write small. Uh, I don't know. There's a nice one. Yeah, um, Callum, your part B could. So I think something's gone wrong with your part B. You've got two over two over three. I think it should be three over two. It's the Y over the X. So check your part B, Callum. Joined <laughs> Minecraft is I love that, that's great. There's a toilet. Nice. Very good. How about 3D one? Could you do it in 3D? Could you include um that could be quite cool. See if you can do some fractals or something in, um, in Minecraft. Um Who's that one? Rebecca. Uh, yeah, this looks great. Yeah, brilliant, Becca. Spot on there. Um, Fifi. That's part C. Your part C is looking good. Yeah, nice. Cool. And then Jones and Pitt. Gradually. Cool, Joan. If you could send me the rest um, before next week, that'd be good. <laughs> uh, yeah, cool. All right, nice, nicely done, guys. Um, okay, so we're going to continue with this on Thursday. It gets a little bit more difficult, and then next week we kind of drag this into a new, new area. Um, hopefully that will make sense, and hopefully that cleared up the mistake I made at the beginning of last lecture. We will find an easy way to do that that involves these diagrams and these angles, which is so much quicker. Um, but we'll be doing that. I think it's next year. I need to check this can work. It might be the end of this term, but um, I'll have a check. Cool. All right. Uh, see you guys on Thursday. Um, oh, what's here? Roddy. Uh, yeah, you did it in the calculator, right? But you're. Um, hang on. Let me just have a look. Which one did I say it was? Pot C. No, pop B. Um, uh, let me check. Ten to the minus one. Three over two. Yeah, you you should have got positive point nine eight two. 
and then you needed to do pi take away that to get. So you you ended up with a positive version of that part there. You see it? Yeah, I don't know why you got the negative. I, f I think you must have put in a minus sign in the calculator. Um, so you should get plus 0.983. Take that away from pi and make the whole thing negative afterwards. Right, if Roddy's alright with that, um, we'll call that day, and I'll see you guys on Thursday. Cheers.